Hey y'all and welcome back to another video by Umbers Darkness. In today's video we're going to be talking about day 6 of server vs server or free choice for server vs server. We're going to be talking about that and we're going to be talking about the much anticipated War of the Kings. Uh, the first part for server vs server is just going to be a quick rundown of the options that I would choose and why I would choose those options and when I would make the switch. And then the second part is going to be my tips and tips and strategies for War of the Kings as if I were in a warring state. Before we get into this, I do like to show progress on my account in these videos, so I'm sorry if this bores you, but my first two teams finally broke 8 million powered combined. Uh, I'm pretty proud of this. It is in part due to wanting to break those cell barriers for you guys, so hopefully I'm able to do a little bit better uh, next time around. Anyways, without further ado, Let's get into the meat and potatoes of the video. So, as always, we're going to press this I right here, and then we're going to go down to day six. But, in this time, we're going to actually view what they are. Your options here are Ant Hill Development, Gathering Resources, Evolution, Strength and Special Ants, and Hatching Soldier Ants. Alright, you guys, the only... Two real options here for me are gathering resources and hatching soldier ants, and I would like to explain why. Alright, so first off, ant hill development. Buildings are expensive, y'all. It's really hard to get the resources to up buildings one time, let alone two times. Um, just, it's not feasible, and you don't want to back yourself into a corner where you're stuck upgrading buildings that don't get you queen 25, uh, or T10s now um, without and it not be that build day so instead of sticking yourself in a corner and potentially running out of resources just don't do that day uh, the next one I would not do would not do is evolutions the reason I wouldn't do evolutions is this thing right here use one creature remain it does give you points inside a server versus server but if we go and look at our colony actions real quick We'll see that on Saturday, none of the none of the events give us creature remains. Sorry, on Saturday, none of the events give us creature remains. So, I really wouldn't want to waste creature remains and not get points on it for the colony action, right? Uh, it's hard enough on that one colony action that doesn't give us points on actual evolution day. And then, the last one is pretty obvious. Day four, we would not want to be doing strengthening special ants and get no resources for it you just burnt out all of your special ants anyways uh that thursday why would you want to strengthen them so that leaves us gathering resources and hatching soldier ants well how would i know which one to do all right so gathering resources if you're a cultivator main uh gathering resources is always a viable option i would strongly recommend gathering resources for anyone that does not have t7s so if your anthill is below level 19 i would not do it um i would caution anyone that has t7s but does not have t8s unlocked yet so anyone between level 19 to 22 uh, and anyone over 22 i 22 and t8s unlocked i would definitely do hatching soldier ants cultivator or not for raiders get uh if you refuse to swap to cultivator i understand why gathering may be difficult however the resource investment on such low level troops is really not worth it i would still recommend gathering resources the other reason that i recommend doing gathering until your queen 22 and caution you at queen 19 besides the point breakdown right the points that you gain for hatching t7 troops versus t8 troops is that you're on on here if we go to zone development your first two skills that you unlock for zone gathering and extra resources uh make it easier for you to place high in chests uh for those events so until you get all the way down here where you have rapid hatch and you increase soldier hatch speed during strongest war events uh it's even harder or mixed medium increases soldier hatch cap during strongest war events but uh down here you have another thing that increases points and there's nothing else that increases points you know what i'm saying uh, so I definitely recommend gathering on here. However, I would like to point out again, going back to the points, uh, you do lose 
points on gathering resources. Your multiplier is only 0 0.5, and your strengthening or your hatching soldier ants multiplier is 0 0.6. But uh, it's just not feasible hatching T6s and below, and it struggles at T7s. The other benefit of swapping to hatching soldier ants is you have the chance to hatch more towards the end if you feel like you could get finish the server server at a high point for gathering you really don't have that safety net all right so the last thing i want to talk to you guys really about is colony actions so on saturday you will have easily after queen 22 uh colony actions that you can complete right between anthill development right here right and colony evolution and solar ant hatch uh easily able to be completed uh, i do not recommend uh going to complete every evolution or every colony action or three colony actions a day until your queen 20 which is why i recommend gathering at least until your queen 19. Uh, it's also another reason that i recommend waiting until uh t sevens right uh now this is why I caution you but don't say no is because it's so easy to overlap them with colony actions. However, if you're not on much, if you're not an addict like I am, uh, maybe it's just not for you. You're really busy on the weekends, in which case I'm going to recommend gathering all the time. Uh, but if you are trying to complete it and you're not at T8s and you have T7s, it would not hurt to do these ones right here. Uh, these ones will net loss you a little bit of the resource it takes to make the troop, but overall be a positive for you. Um, so that's how I do colony actions on Saturday. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask. I will get to every comment that I can. And if you feel like I'm neglecting you, please find me on Discord. Again, if I do not respond fast enough to you or if I sound rude, I don't mean to come off as that way. I am probably busy in real life and doing my best to just respond to you so that way you have an answer. Because I know some people are asking me a question right before they make that decision themselves. Uh, without any further ado, let's get into the second portion of this video, War of the Kings. Now, War of the Kings can go one of two ways. You can either be in a super good server like mine. Uh, I showed it off a couple of weeks ago in which you're taking the squirter with four people and it takes eight hours and everything else. I will be doing a video uh, during our War of the Kings because my wife will be becoming the king and I'll show you guys what it looks like once you become king and I'll show you what you get to do as king because I know that's a question a lot of people have. Uh, however, for this video, I'm going to go as if you're in a warring state. So if you're in a peaceful alliance, uh, thank you guys for being here. Feel free to hop on off. If you're in a warring state, this is my tips and strategies. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to determine who's going to be taking what squirter. So you want your five highest rally centers, five strongest people to post up. You want one person on this corner. 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 And then the person going into the tree can go into any anywhere as long as it's touching the side. Um, preferably right here so that way it's the closest distance to the tree. You want them to have the highest rally center. So if their rally center isn't the highest, tell them to spend that money, spend that those resources, figure it out, get it up be a team player all right uh they're gonna take the tree they're gonna take the squirter first they're gonna get to the tree first spend diamonds until you're under 15 seconds one five seconds to get to the squirter from where you're at uh and make sure it's your strongest team going there now when you take the squirter when you're reinforcing the squirter you cannot be bubbled and if someone hits you you will be auto teleported away and your march units will be returned home so how do you deal with this well, there's multiple things that you can do. One, you're going to have to be on for the whole eight hours. If you're not on for the full eight hours, don't be a part of a warring state. Next, uh, you can have bubbled people around you reinforce you, right? So I would actually t land here 
uh, 24 hours in advance, and I'd have someone next to me land here too. Now, your alliance is 100 people, and I'm talking about using 25 people in order to take all four squirters and take the tree. Um, the other 75 people have a very important job. They need to space out amongst the wet soil in a grid-like formation, kind of like uh, what we used to have here before so many different KEs where there's one gap in between us so that way resources can grow. Same way here, you wanna make it so that way the opposing alliances take as long as possible to get to the squirter, take as long as possible to get to those that are unbubbled. So the front row, this whole entire first row right here should be unbubbled. And then the rows following that should be bubbled and reinforcing the 25 people that are going in. The reason I say it's 25 people is because the person that takes the squirter is one person and then you can be reinforced by four people if your troop tunnel is four big. So that is level 11. Uh, so all 25 of those people will not be able to have bubbles on. Uh, however, the people, that re the people that reinforce him will be able to. Um, those people don't have to be on, on all the time. Hopefully they're on often enough to heal their troops and reinforce again. Uh, but the 25 people, at least the main person, needs to be on all the time to be able to strengthen their garrison if they need to, heal their troops, and send them back out. I hope that that makes sense to you guys. I know it might have been a little bit confusing, but it is super important and super difficult to get. If you are in a warring state for War of the Kings, uh, maybe consider not doing gathering for your selection day and hatching troops. Again, those are the only two viable options in my opinion. This is another reason why I recommend a peaceful state because a warring state loses out and has a lot of difficulties winning on Saturdays for that reason. Unless the whales of the server really outperform and hatch a lot of troops. I hope that this helps. I hope this gives some idea. Uh, it's really easy if you're not in a warring state. It's really easy if you are in a warring state. If you have teamwork, uh, good team unity, and you know what you're doing. If you have any questions, you guys can find me in the YouTube comments. You can find me on Discord. My name will be in the description below. Or, worst case scenario, like I always tell you guys, catch me on server 174. Until next time, you guys, stay humble, stay happy, stay hungry. Bye, y'all.